by now we've heard about a plan to blast sulfur into the atmosphere to cool the earth. And pouring tons of iron dust into the seas to reduce carbon dioxide levels. Even if they work, they're light years away from happening. So what's an environmentally conscious ban to do in the meantime to stem the tide of carbon emissions? Check this out. Sound check time in Halifax. By now, the Very Naked Ladies have been on the road for 75 days. By now, it's hard enough to stay rested and healthy without worrying about making a mess of the planet. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. But the Bare Naked Ladies' latest tour has made the environment a priority. They're trying to make it a priority for their fans as well. So what you can do is make a $5 donation. As the audience files in, the lobby is filled with various enviro groups promoting their causes. But it's backstage where the biggest changes have taken place. The biggest difference you'll notice uh, is that we have real cutlery, real plates, cloth napkins that can be washed, as opposed to disposable cutlery plastic throwaway plates and paper napkins. The cookies are all reusable as well. These cookies uh, we bring with us daily, and what we do is we chew and suck on them for a while, and then we pull them off our tongue and form them back into cookie-shaped cakes and put them back. It just kind of dawned on us a few years ago that our backstage was nothing like the rest of our lives. There's, you know, idling generators and there's, uh, disposable beer cups and the lunch was always on disposable plastic plates and stuff. I think things that were there to make life easy, not just for us, but for caterers and for the venue and whatever else, uh, didn't reflect our own values. The Bare Naked Ladies have a history of public concern for the environment. Four years ago, Stephen Page allowed Toyota to publicize his purchase of a Prius hybrid. But they also practice what they preach in their private lives. But two years ago, my family made a choice to Go carless. The lake is, I don't know, 200 meters from my front door, maybe a little more, 400 meters from my front door. And my kids uh, have never swam in Lake Ontario. I'm a cancer survivor, and I believe, you know, theoretically the cancer I had was caused by our environment. The buses that drive everybody from concert to concert through both the United States and Canada are running on 20% biodiesel. The band figures that's kept some 60,000 pounds of CO2 out of the atmosphere. In Canada, it's tough to get distribution for the fuels. That's the biggest hurdle for us. It was a lot easier in the U.S. The network's broader. We don't have a lot of producers. Western Canada, we had to go without for most of that trip because we couldn't find biodiesel. And we're, you know, we're, we're as connected as it gets because we're very high profile. Everybody wants us to use their product, and there's nobody out there. See this? Looks like a regular paper bowl. It's sugarcane fiber, fully biodegradable. And these, potato starch based. Again, fully biodegradable. People ask us every time, how difficult to transition was this? For us, not at all. We just said we wanted it to happen. And I think in the end, that's what has to happen. Someone at the top of any corporate structure has to decide it's a priority and it'll happen. This is totally new to the rock and roll, you know, and it's great. As long as the food is hot and tasty, it doesn't seem to matter too much whether it's served on china or plastic. You know, I try to do it at home anyways. I have a composter at home, so, yeah, it's, you, you have to kind of look for the, the recycling bin sometimes, but it's, it's not really an imposition. It's been long weeks since you looked at me. Cut your hand to the side and said I'm angry. Five days into the afternoon, you said, get that together, come back and see me. The group is also buying carbon credits from alternative power companies to offset the massive power drain of the stage show. In the U.S., they neutralize 300 tons of carbon dioxide. You go to a company like Bullfrog Power or Zero Footprint, and uh, you tell them your travel plans, for example. Bullfrog Power are offsetting the electricity we use during our shows, and Zero Footprint are offsetting our, uh, our, our travel emissions. So, for instance, they might calculate that over the course of a two-hour show, we emit X number of pounds of CO2. So we give them an amount of money to pay for the equivalent amount of green energy we put back into the grid. And then you guys get to watch the show. That's for the reward for your good work. 
over one million miles of driving was offset by fans wandering the concourse selling five dollar carbon offset credits to members of the audience. Come on, we're changing the world, one concert at a time. <laughs> it's nice that this is set up here and that they are doing, you know, they are actually showing that they do support it. why people are suspicious of scientists. The, the argument supporting global warming is based on science, it's based on research, it's based on fact. The argument against global warming is based on conjecture. Um, and I think it's time we started uh, paying attention to scientists. They're trying to save our asses. It's catchy. Stick around. We'll do our own bit of carbon offsetting to make sure you don't suffer any guilt while watching Daily Planet's week-long special series called Global Warning. And we will show you exactly how that's going to happen next. Mm -hmm.